Welcome, everyone, to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. Glad you're on for the ride. Thank you so much. What's Working is the show designed to bring you workplace, workforce, and marketplace trends shaping the workplace, the workforce, and the marketplace around us. We look for the people that can talk about the trends so that by understanding them, you and I can get a little bit better at whatever it is that we do. Again, welcome. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate, housed in the Culver House College of Business, all housed in the University of Alabama. Trends. I love them. I love them. They define the show. And for the past two years, we've done the annual Holiday Wine Trends show. What's happening in the wine world? And it's a great conversation to have around the holidays as perhaps you're scheduling a Christmas party or want to go to the the holiday dinner and order something unique. In truth, as it's called in my household, this is the great wine boondoggle show. Jim Cox will be in the studio with me shortly, and he will bring a handful of the new trendy wines that he feels that we would be uh, wise to know about, I guess. And we'll talk about the wine trends, and most importantly, we'll open a couple of these bottles, and we're not going to drink them. We're going to taste them. There's a big difference between drinking wine and tasting wine. And during the process, tell you a little bit about the wines that are popular this year, if that's your kind of thing, as well as things beyond wine that may be popular this year. So Jim is one of the high, again, you've, if you're a fan of the show, you know, December is the time of year where I go down the road, picking up with my old colleagues that I've enjoyed having on the show in the past. And anybody that shows up in the studio with a couple of bottles of wine to taste and talk about is going to be a friend of mine. It makes me sound pretty uh, low life and, and shallow. And I think that's probably pretty accurate. When I come back, Jim Cox and I will talk wine, the annual Wine Trend Show, a.k.a. the Great Wine Boondoggle. You're listening to What's Working, brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate, housed in the Culver House College of Business, all housed in the University of Alabama. Welcome to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. What's Working is the show designed to bring you workplace, workforce, and marketplace trends that are shaping the workplace, the workforce, and the marketplace around us. I try to find guests that can teach us about the trends impacting their business and teach us in such a way that there's something we can take from these conversations, apply to our own world, and hopefully will make each of us a little bit better at whatever it is that we do. Again, welcome. You can hear the show as a radio broadcast across the state of Alabama in the six markets where we exist, as well as a podcast cast at whatsworkingcam.com. Lots to do in today's show. Going to try to get the preamble within two minutes so that I can save space for what we got coming. And here's what that is. Segment five today will feature a commentary from David Webb. He's a regular commentary person on this show. David has noticed a subtle stench in some business places around the state that he uh, is a little bit put off by. And that stench has something to do with either the relaxed enforcement of marijuana laws or the new laws surrounding marijuana. I don't know what it is, but David seems to be unpleased by it, I guess is a simple way of saying it. And in segment five in his commentary, he's going to tell us a little bit about what he's seeing and how he feels about it. I welcome David's opinions on the show. Prior to David, though, and when we come back from break, I'll have Troy Whetstone on the phone with me. He's the founder CEO of the Modern House Coffee Shop in the Titusville community of Birmingham. It is a nonprofit social entrepreneurship. Troy and his business are the cover page article in this month's Business Alabama magazine. It is the collaboration that I've started that we, Business Alabama magazine and What's Working with Cam Marston, have started together to feature one of their articles and go into depth with one of their guests. And I'm pleased with the collaboration with Business Alabama magazine. If you want to find more about Business Alabama, go to businessalabama.com. When we come back from break, I'll have Troy on the phone with me. You're listening to What's Working, brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate, Culver House College of Business, University of Alabama. My sponsor, Get the Tea, is having their annual holiday sale. You won't want to miss it. 
When you purchase two months of their tea, you'll get one month for free. It's available in three flavors, natural, peppermint, my favorite, or pomegranate. Save $35. Their teas and supplements are sourced from the purest ingredients available. Especially this time of year when you'll be around so many cookies, you'll want to make sure that your digestive system is intact. So why not now? Don't take your health for granted. It's now o'clock. Go to getthetea.com, enter code CAM5, that's C-A-M-5, to receive an additional $5 off your order. That's getthetea.com, code CAM5. When making the largest investment choice in most families' financial portfolio, you need a realtor who truly understands the market and can negotiate favorable terms and conditions. I'm Angelo DiPaola, the Coastal Connection with EXP Realty, the preferred real estate advisor for buying or selling along the Gulf Coast. For full access to the MLS in Mobile, Baldwin County, Pensacola, Destin, or Panama City, just Google Angelo DiPaola, the Coastal Connection. with me this morning, Troy Whetstone. Troy is the CEO of the Modern House Coffee Shop in the Titusville neighborhood in Birmingham. Troy comes to me via Business Alabama. Once a month, we do a uh, collaboration with Business Alabama where we feature one of their stories on the radio show and in talking with Business Alabama. And they were explaining to me the number of the stories they had available. Troy is one that leaped out because of his story, as well as his efforts around nonprofit social entrepreneurship, which we'll get into with Troy. Troy, oh, by the way, you're listening to What's Working. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate at the Culver House College of Business at the University of Alabama. Troy, thank you for your time. Welcome to What's Working. Hello, Cam. How you doing today, man? I, I'm so excited to be a part of uh, this conversation um, and to be on air with you today. And um I think it's awesome. Uh, I will also want to thank Business Alabama for uh, writing an article about us and, uh, you know, helping us spread the word about what we're doing here. And it's, it's Titusville. And so it's Titusville, Alabama, we're a, sh- a small city uh, inside of the Birmingham community. Mm-hmm. I mispronounced it. I apologize. You'll have to correct me again <laughs> if it happens in, in the Titusville community of Birmingham. No Troy, problem. you have been discovered, we could say. Perhaps it's been a long time coming. You're one of these 15 yes. year yes. overnight sensations to have the cover <laughs> article in Business Alabama. And then when I heard about it, I said, I got to get in on this. So. Tell us uh, a little bit about your background and why your story has been so compelling to people like me, to like people like Business Alabama. And in the article, it, it seems that you've done quite well getting funding for your ideas. Apparently, people have fallen in love with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so, um, you know, I just start off as me as a personal person, yeah. right? as a, just being personal. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm 35 years old. Um, I'm married, uh, happily married and, uh, have three beautiful kids. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, uh, my oldest son is Peyton. Uh, he's six, um, uh, my middle son, uh, price and, uh, price is he'll be one, but, uh, he's one, but he'd be turning two, uh, next month. And, uh, Janelle just snuck up on us. And so Janelle is three months now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I believe this is it, you know, uh, for us, I, I thought my second son was it. Cause I was like, okay, two boys. Great. You know, so, <laughs> um, kind of happy about that. But, um, yeah, my Janelle, yeah, she, she's, uh, you know, she's been attached to mom a lot. Uh, but now she's she's accepted me as her father now. So um, I can hold her and snuggle up with her. And um, I'm just truly blessed to have her as, um, and be a part of the family. As we're um, speaking, my four kids are all getting ready to, to head off. I've got three that are home. One's a college student and they're all heading off to school to take their exams and stuff like that. Um, and nice. m- mine have not snuggled up to me. It's been 20 years. <laughs> You've got a recipe that I don't have. <laughs> yeah. So tell me what got you into this business that you're in. Tell me uh, a little bit about uh, what got you, what ultimately landed you into the Modern House Coffee Shop. Yeah. So I'm um, about 2016, man. I, I just heard the word coffee. 
and uh, it, it just brought to me in my spirit, and I know God took it, um, t- gave it to me. And, um, you know, from that point, I was just trying to figure out, um, you know, okay, coffee, cool, you know, let's see about, you know, doing a coffee shop. And so I'm not a, dr- a coffee drinker, and I, I definitely want to put that out there as well. Um, you know, I, I haven't been to multiple coffee shops. If I have, I, I've gone to visit. Um, on a business meeting or somewhat like that. And, um, and that, that was it. So, um, after I heard the word coffee, I just kind of start, you know, branching out, going to different coffee shops and just trying to get the atmosphere and seeing, um, you know, what it was about. And, um, I later heard nonprofit, uh, from God when he spoke to me and I quickly dismissed nonprofit. Um, uh, right. So, I did not know that that was a model. It just didn't make sense. You know, it's like, who starts a coffee shop that's a nonprofit? And ah, let's get rid of that, you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, so I, I've been serving uh, with my uh, local church, uh, Faith Chapel. Uh, we located in Wildham, which is also a, a small city inside of Birmingham. And, um, you know, we, we, we have a care center called the Faith Chapel Care Center, which is downtown Birmingham. It's on 2nd Avenue North. And uh, we do so many great things for uh, the homeless community, and we call them our guests. And, um, you know, we do so much stuff between, uh, you know, some health care, small health care things. Um, you know, uh, we have a shower there, uh, shower stalls there. Um, up to three people can take a shower at different times, and it's all separate, you know, and each person has their own stall. Um, and then we also have a laundry department there. Um, as well. And, um, you know, so much other things that we do, we serve them, you know, we spread the word of God. Uh, we have shoes, clothing, um, so much things. And so I've been serving as a leader there and, um, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur, so I have another business outside of this one. Um, and, you know, I just felt that what we was doing was great. But I felt that we was also helping the cycle continue, right? And um, that cycle was, you know, is a repeat customers. <laughs> um, they stay homeless and they come through and they get what they need and they go and they come back, you know. And uh, and it's great because, you know, I do, I've learned a lot in the uh, homeless community um, about why people have gotten homeless. And um, I, I did statistics and um You know, it's amazing that, you know, most Americans are one paycheck away from being homeless. Um, You know, and I just found out literally yesterday um, that it just kind of brings uh, reality to me even more clear about the mission and the purpose is that I actually have a a first cousin that has been experiencing homelessness um, herself. And uh, she's been out of state and, uh, you know, unfortunate circumstances have brought her back to the city. Um, but I think it's a blessing because we didn't know she was homeless until now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but you know, I, I, I saw that, that we was doing good work. Um, and, and I just wanted to, um, you know, do something different. And so that's when I accepted the word nonprofit and I said, okay, nonprofit homeless, let's do it with coffee. And originally, everybody at the Modern House, <laughs> and Modern House, that name came later. I still don't know what it means. People ask me all the time. I was like, hey, I don't really know. I don't even have no time to kind of dive into it <laughs> because I've just been full steam ahead um, about the process. And, and it's definitely been a journey and a process for us to get this thing off the ground. Um, you know, but my, my pastor, uh, he, he just recently stepped down. So my... Um, and I, I still respect him and call him uh, my pastor at the time. Um, you know, he had an unction uh, from God and the Holy Spirit to, um, you know, help eradicate homelessness in the Birmingham community. And, um, you know, when I met with his son, which now is my pastor, uh, Michael K. Uh, Moore, um, he he told his dad about it. And his dad was like, oh, my goodness, you know, let me talk to him. Let me you know, see what's, you know, let me get, sit in front of him and, and hear from him about what God has, you know, asked him to do. And, um, you know, he had an unction. He he was the first person to believe in us. And, um, you know, he was the first person to stroke out, you know, 20,000 plus checks. Yeah. Wow. And you, um, that's a big commitment. Yeah. 
that's a huge commitment, right? That <laughs> so, is. Um, and so, you know, from there, um, you know, it, it was, you know, Ms. Zandra Jones, uh, she, she was leading the, she was at the time, she was the executive director of the Community Foundation. And I've done a few things, um, you know, events with them. Uh, my partnership with C's Coffee Company uh, and then also being attached to Faith Chapel. Uh, she knew about those already existing, um, um, you know, our organizations. And uh, she believed also into what we was doing. And uh, she was able to help us with the charge on, on that. So, I mean, we um, received grant. F- Go ahead. No, I, I want to uh, I, I, you, you, I see that in the article here, you received some grants, but there was something you said. And I talked to a colleague of mine here in Mobile named Matt Armbruster. He runs Ransom Ministries. He had he and I had this conversation not long ago that the cycle just continues. And you said that a moment ago yourself, that uh, unless we do something different, the cycle just continues. In other words, we they show up. We may offer them a shower, give them food. The homeless offer them a shower, give them some food. Mm-hmm. But we're not breaking the cycle. We are doing right. something good for them, but we're yes. not helping them to the furthest extent that we could, which is getting them into a home and a predictable lifestyle. Yes. Talk to me right. about that. Yeah. So, um, that's, that, that's very important. Right. And, and I, and I, I feel like that's why I, I said yes to this, right. I look like I get the credit, but I always point it back to God. Um, because I'm just here naturally that people can see and seem that I did it. I, I didn't do any of this, <laughs> you know, and, um, but, but it, it was, um, you know, that cycle that I felt that that could be broken and, and you know, job um, placement is one um, social skills is a huge one. Right. Um, being part of the organization to see your struggle. Right. And to be like, I'm not going to fire you because of you, you struggle with maybe an addiction. Right. Um, but we can help with that by, you know, making sure that uh, you get the correct resources that you need, um, but then also still keeping boundaries and guidelines to be in that structure of a uh, corporation and a business as well. Um, you know, so to, um, you know, also uh, the financial literacy part yeah. and, and that our next, you know, we, we have a few next steps. So what we want to do here at the Modern House, um, but eventually I do want to have a community, um, you know, whether it's here locally in Titusville, what's Connected to Titusville is the West End area, um, where the, it's somewhere close. But I would love for us to be able to get a few houses. Let's um, let's talk about that, Troy. When we come back from break, got to turn it over to the okay. advertisers for a moment and talk about the future of the organization. And I want to learn more about nonprofit social entrepreneurship, where you're actually running a business where the profits are being plowed into the social issues that you want to address. The article in Business Alabama goes into detail on it. It's not something I knew a lot about, and I want to hear you talk about it when we come back. You're listening to What's Working on the Line with me, Troy Whetstone in the Titusville community of Birmingham. He's the CEO of Modern House Coffee Shop and one of our areas, our state's nonprofit social entrepreneurs. We'll learn more about that in one moment. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate at the Culver House College of Business, housed at the University of Alabama. I'm Paul Lewis, General Manager of Roy Lewis Construction. Many of our commercial buildings you drive by daily on both sides of the bay are the fruits of our client relationship since our beginning in the early 80s. It is our mission to bring value to our clients, from retrofits to ground-up construction and everything in between. We have more advocates than any of our competitors who have been in business twice as long. Same with repeat business. Same with referrals. Find us online at RoyLewisConstruction.com and let's talk about your next commercial project. My sponsor, Get the Tea, is having their annual holiday sale. You won't want to miss it. When you purchase two months of their tea, you'll get one month for free. It's available in three flavors, natural, peppermint, my favorite, or pomegranate. Save $35. Their teas and supplements are sourced from the purest ingredients available, especially this time of year when you'll be around so many cookies You'll want to make sure that your digestive system is intact. So why not now? Don't take your health for granted. It's now o'clock. 
Go to GetTheTea.com, enter code CAM5, that's C-A-M-5, to receive an additional $5 off your order. That's GetTheTea.com, code CAM5. Whetstone's on the line with me, CEO, Modern House Coffee Shop in the Titusville community of Birmingham. He heard a calling, Troy, and you're not the first person on this show that's had that experience, heard a calling that brought him into the coffee business and runs a coffee house. It's a non-profit social entrepreneurship where he takes the homeless off the street, Troy, if I understand this correctly, employs them and teaches them the skills that will get them out of a homeless situation permanently. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate at the Culver House College of Business at the University of Alabama. Troy, prior to the break, we were talking more about this nonprofit social entrepreneurship. Give me the bones of that. What exactly is that? Okay, so um, it's finding a need, right? And um, it's saying yes to the calls, staying focused on that calls. Um but but finding things that in the community that, that that's needed and uh, connecting that with entrepreneurship skills, um, you know, to uh, make that, you know, to help create that um, that need that's for the community. So you've started this business that's the coffee shop and the need right. of the community is homelessness and you've tied yes. the two together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm hmm. And tell me how that works. Well, so uh, within our partnerships, um, you know, we hire people who are experiencing homelessness, uh, whether it's through the Faith Chapel Care Center. Uh, we have a One Roof organization down here. Um, we also have a, a few ministries that, um, that uh, get people out of the prison system. And uh, we also have Youth Towers as well. Youth Towers is a... Uh, a, a um, nonprofit here locally um, that helps um, kids, I don't want to call them children, uh, helps kids and, and teenagers that ages out of the uh, um, system and which causes them to be homeless because they don't have a, a stable home already. Yeah, And, um, and so uh, w that's another partner of ours that we actually get those ones that's ready, um, get them here, train them, and, um, you know, they become baristas here. Uh, and we only been open for three months, but what a three months is being, <laughs> right? bet, yes. um, you know, and um, it's going really great. And I'm so, you know, just honored and just to be a part of this process uh, was since us being open and, and I'm just going to be honest. Um, some of the partnerships that I did try to go after said no, right? And and it's okay. It's going to happen. I think that's part of any business. However, um, they couldn't see the vision then, but now that it's been open, they actually see the vision. And this is a really big partnership. And um, and I we I haven't said anything yet, and uh, I'm gonna wait until uh, they give me the okay to because there's some some things we need to finish up. Um, but they're going to be doing their financial literacy part. Yeah. And um, they didn't want to just do it for our um, employees, but they wanted to do it for the entire community. So um, at a certain period of time in the coffee shop, we're going to stop things. Operations will still be going, um, but we're going to open it up for the whole community to get financial literacy uh, uh, training and those type of things. And so, um, you know, those are the things that's kind of being, you know, that social entrepreneur uh, of finding different ways to, not the norm. It's kind of like the, the you know, get out the the four walls of the church. You know, uh, get into the places that need it. And so um, I'm just you know honored and blessed to to be a part of it. Yeah. So the Business Alabama article defines nonprofit social entrepreneurship this way: providing solutions to social ills or donating to causes is the primary mission, rather than making profits. They are engaging in what is called a nonprofit social enterprise. So I, I'm curious about hiring the homeless to become baristas. 
most I, I think most employers that are listening and let me let me give you a sense of the the audience that this show tries to cultivate is largely going to be someone in their mid 40s or older it tends to skew male versus female and they are in a position of influence in their business they're a manager they're a supervisor they're a leader they're an owner that's typically who listens But if I were to take one of these typical listeners of mine and say, hey, I want you to hire this homeless person. I want you to put a bet on this homeless person. Most of them are going to say, you know, I'm not willing to take that risk. I need somebody that's largely predictable to come to work in my workplace that has a stable underpinning home, family, whatever that may be. They're they're looking for the the least risky person to hire. By you hiring these people with a background in homelessness, you take a big risk. Tell me about how you screen them, how you you know, qualify them for the work that you do if, if there are criteria that they must meet in order to be employed there regularly. You just you just don't pull up to a homeless person and say, do you can you want to be a barista jump in the car with me, do you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. And um and, and you know what? I, I think we we both that your listener and, and me, I think we share that that um that fear, right? Right. Um, you know, but that's that's what my process and my thinking originally it was to hire nobody but um, homeless people and uh kind of going through that process and, and it was like that's that's you can't do it right um just because you do have the risk of people not showing up sure um but then we also do help with transportation uh birmingham have a um you know a new system that uh, a new bus system that is expressed um but then they also have uh their own uber which is um, uh, if I didn't just say it, I would have told you the sure, name of sure. it. But they have their own Uber, and so it's a it's a fixed rate. And so um, we've actually been going through them uh, to help transportation uh, transportation around uh, for some of our employees. Um, and so that's that keeps our costs down, but it also helps us keep track of them, also of uh, making sure that they come in, you know, to work and going back home. Um, but I think each employee is a risk. Do you, you know, bet on that person, like you said, or, or do you just say, ah, I'm going to go with a different other person? Right. I think you just have to make the best decision. Yeah. And um, and so that's why, you know, we are very, you know, strategic and, and, and um, about who we hire. You know, yes, they experience homelessness, but then also, too, they may have a part time job already. Oh, so they've I see. already you know, they're already staying, they're already stable on a the job. They just, they don't make enough uh, as a full livable wage. And I, I think that's something that also too, that we have to address here um, as a global uh, part is just uh, paying people a livable wage. Um, I think that we we do a really good job here, especially starting off at a, at a new uh, business um, on paying people uh, way above the minimum wage here. And um you know, so um, I, I would definitely say, you know, give a person a chance. And uh, that's kind of our quote, too, is that we believe in second chances. Um, a lot of people with that second chance would do right. Um, you know, even if they've been to prison and rehabilitated and stuff like that, um, you know, what we go through in life, uh, it helps correct us for the most part. It does, <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, I mean. So the, we, we, we can't be closed off. The article does say uh, the Business Alabama article does say that you pay them a, an extraordinary wage considering their backgrounds and the work that they do. Is the sense that you get from the people that you employ there? I, w- I, w- I want to know. I want to feel that they're grateful for the bet that you've placed on them. What is the attitude of those that you employ? Um, honestly, you know, grateful, I would think, would be one of them. Um you know, people here that works here, they, um, I think they feel part of a, a bigger community. Yeah. So very um, important. Yeah. And so it, that's kind of like what helps me, you know, the culture that we create here. Uh, I'm really big on that. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, it shows their worth. <laughs> right. Right. Um, you know, so, yeah, so I, I mean, and I don't want to just throw the word loyalty out. We've only been open for three months, but at the same time, um, they're dedicated to their work. 
And, um, and so I think that, you know, that, that helps as well. Of course, people, you know, money is something that always needs to be more, but, uh, you can give a person a raise and they still not happy, you know, in the next four or five months. Um, I, I think that goes with the culture of the company more than the, the, you know, what the salary is for that uh, person. But our next steps, uh, I'm working. I'm going to go ahead and say that now. We're well, let's get into next rope. steps when we come back from break, because I'm very <laughs> curious about these yeah. next steps. I can tell a guy like you is never satisfied with what they've got. They're always pushing forward. Troy Whetstone is the founder, CEO of the Modern House Coffee Shop, located in the Titusville community of Birmingham. He's featured. He's the cover page article in this month's December Business Alabama magazine. Pick up a copy if you want to learn more or find businessalabama.com online. When we come back, Troy, I want to hear your plans for the future. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate, Culver House College of Business, all housed at the University of Alabama. At Roy Lewis Construction, we're in the business of adding value. Whether it's working with you to meet your unique business needs or making investments in our community in lasting ways, providing unparalleled value and quality in every commercial construction project. When planning your next commercial project, reach out to Roy Lewis Construction. We'll pair you with a designer that best suits your project needs and work with that designer to balance the best architectural outcome with the best budget outcome. Find us online at RoyLewisConstruction.com, building legacies one relationship at a time. Customer service never goes out of style. In fact, I think it's safe to say that customer service is more valuable and more important now more than ever. Hi, this is Cam Marston. One thing that my over 200 episodes of What's Working has taught me is how important customer service is to building and maintaining a thriving business. It's the growing need for customer service that's led me to partner with one of the state's leading customer service trainers to create our program called Delivering Five Star Customer Service. Your team will get one 90-minute training session per month for six consecutive months. Each session builds on the skills learned the previous month, allowing your customer-facing teams to practice before moving on to the next lesson. And the six lessons address everything from appearance to electronic communications to conflict resolution to maintaining a service mindset. Our program travels and is delivered in person at your workplace. Nothing virtual. You simply can't practice the level of the skills this course teaches virtually. For more information, email me, cam at cammarston.com, and let's schedule a time to talk. Remember, you have less to fear from outside competition than you do from discourtesy and bad service from inside your own company. Again, email me, cam at cammarston.com, and let's talk about your business. back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. On the phone with me, Troy Whetstone. He's the CEO of the Modern House Coffee Shop. They are a nonprofit social entrepreneurship organization. They've said, we've got a challenge to address. And rather than put our hand out everywhere and try to get donations, we're going to generate revenue to address our challenge. We're going to do it as much as we can internally. So Troy, and I'm summarizing for you here, Troy, heard the word of the Lord. And the word was coffee. He is now the CEO of the Modern House Coffee Shop. He has admitted that he's not a coffee drinker, yet he is the CEO (laughs) of this thing. And thus far, in a short amount of time, they're doing quite well. My experience with people like Troy is that they're very seldom rest on their laurels. They're always looking at what's next. Troy, over to you, my man. What's next? Yeah, so what's next is uh, first quarter of 2023. We're excited that we're going to start roasting. Uh, We've hired a roaster. Um, then with also too that roast is going to be training people who are experiencing homelessness. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to be connected in and, and getting that person, which is another streamline of our uh, business. Um, you know, and so I'm really excited about that. Um, and here's the thing too, it's, it's still part of the modern house family. Um, this is also this, this business is for profit. Um, that will help streamline our nonprofit. 
And um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be helping uh, young entrepreneurs uh, or not just young entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs of color. Um, I went to just this is all off topic, but I was at Home Depot the other day and uh, there was a uh, Hispanic lady selling coffee outside of her uh, truck. And I mean, she was doing really well. And it wasn't a food truck neither. This is like, you know, a real truck, pickup truck and like people coming to it and, you know, they, you know, buying a cup of coffee. And I was just like, you know, with the things and the knowledge that I have now of the of the industry, which is not a lot compared to some people, but I do have a good grasp of it now. And uh, I just felt like, you know, hey, that could be something that we could help that person, you know, start up their own coffee shop, too. Um, and, and be able to help control cost as well. And so we, we, we've narrowed down uh, two importers that we're looking to use uh, for green beans. And, um, you know, there's, you know, a few different, you know, avenues that we're going to be, you know, selling our coffee through, not just at, um, at local coffee shops. And, um, yes, yeah, so we, we're going to be doing some things that's um, – untraditional um uh, with with the coffee beans and so i don't want to get my business plan out right i just want people to start seeing it <laughs> so um but I, that i'm really excited about this um you know about about the roasting part i, I think it's going to be really great um uh, what's crazy about you know roasting and most people think that you know money comes from the the coffee shop but you know when you add in the cost of the cup the coffee itself um you know the lid the sleeve um, all those type of things. It really a slim margin of uh, profit that you receive uh, from selling coffee. Um, the biggest and the largest part is the roasting, um, you know, and, and owning the farm and roasting. <laughs> right? yeah. I don't know. We'll get there, but I won't put any limits. Uh, yeah, that's my thing. Put no limits on anything. Um, but but roasting is next. I'm really excited. Um, I'm pumped up about it. And, um, and yeah. Choice. So my experience is when people find people like you who are deeply passionate about something and the passion is not for their self glory, but for something else to help other people to uh, part of their service to the Lord, whatever it may be, when they're passionate about something, passionate about something and the fruit of the labor is to give something else to someone else, just exactly what you're doing. I find that when we find people like that, we want to help them. So at this moment, you've got an audience of people who are listening, who are saying, man, I like what this guy's doing. He's passionate about it. He's doing it for the right reasons. Here's your moment, Troy. What do you need? If there are people out there with an expertise, a product, uh, access to something, if you could make a laundry list of things that you need right now, what are the things that you need? Wow. <laughs> well, great question. And thank you, Cam, for that. Um, wow. I, I would say that, you know, um, of course we all, you can always use more money, right? <laughs> There's always that, always will be There's that. Al always that, but, but having people who are in, um, you know, in that capacity, in that field of, uh, of, uh, packaging and, um, logistics, you know, part of that plan next is, is getting into, uh, local grocery stores, you know, so so if you have those type of connections, you know, being able to connect with me would be great to to help me um, learn the process more because, you know, it versus me um, continues on researching on, the, you know, being able to get, um, you know, get our products into that space. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, you need uh, introductions. Having, I, I need introductions and connections, introductions um, and connections for the retail and, and, marketplace. That's right. In relationships. Um, that's that's where we're going next. And, um, you know, I, I, it's funny, you know, you say these things and it's like, wow, man, you hit right on my heart, you know, because it's like that's that's what it is. I, I never look at anything uh, for as myself. Um, it's always how do you help someone? And I just believe that when, you know, you help someone, you just get blessed right along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, with it. And so that's just how it works. Um, but. But yeah, so definitely people who are knowledgeable of the retail market, um, we can use it. 
we can use it big time. I'm going to introduce you. Here's my commitment to you, Troy. I'm going to introduce you to one of the favorite guests we've ever had on the show, a man named Marquis Forge out of Autogaville, Alabama. His company is 1186 Water. He heard a call from the Lord to bottle water back in his hometown, and he uprooted from northern Alabama, moved back to Autogaville, and now their bottled water is the state water of Alabama. I had a bottle at the Battle House uh, Hotel here in Mobile yesterday. It's now served by the Battle House in their events. And it's served all over the it's sold rather all over the southeast. And if I follow his social media correctly, they're now shipping it all over the nation. And Marquis has maybe two or three steps ahead of you in his distribution of product. And perhaps there's some introductions and some wisdom he could share with you. You're not competitors, coffee and water, but I think he may have a soft spot for your story. And I'd say this with utter uh, reverence to Marquis Ford, perhaps one of the most greatest men I've ever had the opportunity to interview and get to know. And it would be a delight to connect the two of you. And I'm certain there are people out there listening that says, hey, I can help Troy out. Here's someone that I know and uh, try to get your coffee out there more. I'm sure you'll take customers through the door of the Modern House Coffee Shop. Tell us where that's located. Yeah, most definitely. We can accept customers everywhere in the U.S. Uh, log into www.coffeeand, it's spelled out A-N-D, community.com, coffeeandcommunity.com. Um, that's our website. Um, but if you're local or if you come and pass the Birmingham area, you can stop by us. And we at 422 6th Avenue South, um, Birmingham, Alabama. Zip code is 35205. Again, it's uh, 422 6th Avenue South. Uh, we are in Apple Maps and Google Maps as well. So, with you know, those two things, it is sending you right to us. You're doing the right things, it sounds like to me. And I really applaud. And, and again, I mentioned this guy a moment ago, uh, Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. He's identified the same thing in his work that uh, there's nothing wrong with giving away stuff, money, whatever it may be to someone in need. But it it, it puts a Band-Aid on the problem. It doesn't fix the root of the problem. Once we can teach people who need the lessons to become predictable to employers, we solve the root of the problem, which is um, uh, the, w- the root of the homelessness problem. And to find people People that are doing that and are taking the extra work. If I give somebody some money outside the window of my car, I feel good about myself, but I'm perpetuating the problem, according to what Matt and I talked about over coffee the other day. So to find somebody that's taking it to the next level and saying, we're going to address the root of the problem, we're going to give them a job, we're going to teach them financial literacy, we're going to teach them interpersonal communication skills that will ultimately make them employable so they don't wind up in this situation again. You take on an extra burden, an extra load, it's harder to do what you you're doing and my hat's off to you my friend and i thank you very much for what you're doing thank you cam and um you know i'm i'm honored to be doing it you know i'm honored i'm blessed to be alive and i'm i'm just so happy to stand yes to the call um i know a lot of times we hear different callings in our lives and sometimes we're just afraid to just jump into it and say yes um, but i would like people to just you know start saying yes and, and moving forward and never you know, I didn't have the resources, you know, to do this, uh, what we've done. And um, what we've done is just, it's mind blowing and incredible. Um, you know, I, like I said, my pastor was the first person to to believe into what we was doing. And it was a snowball effect from there. Yeah. Um, you know, we started just gaining, continues gaining resources. And, um, you know, our equipment is completely paid for. It's not finance. Um, you know, so it's, you know, I'm blessed. You know, people, if you're not an entrepreneur, you have the entrepreneur spirit. Uh, Everybody starts off at zero. Um, Just make your plan, uh, get connected, start building relationships with people and um, and do things for the right reasons. (laughs) Right. And uh, it's nothing wrong with making money. It's part of it. (laughs) You said yes. Your pastor stepped up with a big check. As I look at this article here in Business Alabama, there was also a $10,000 low interest loan from Urban Impact Birmingham. There was a $25,000 grant from the Community Foundation. You said yes, 
and things started to happen. And suddenly you're on the front page of Business Alabama magazine. And of all the things that have happened to you, mine's probably the least significant. But I heard your story and wanted to know about you. You said yes, and things started happening. And uh, I'm all in for you, my friend. Again, all in for you. What I'm going to do, folks, if you're listening, I'm going to put his website in the show notes. If you listen, if you want to find the podcast of this show, you'll find a link to his website where you can learn more, perhaps order coffee from him. And if you're local to the Birmingham area, why not go by and give yourself a treat with a a cup of Troy's Coffee, the modern house coffee shop available. You can find it on Google Maps, 422 6th Avenue South. Troy, good luck to you, my friend. If I can be of help, please call back. Will do. Thank you, Cam. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. We'll be back after this break with segment five. We'll have a commentary from David Webb when we get back. What's Working is brought to you by the Alabama Center for Real Estate at the Culver House College Business, all housed at the University of Alabama. Is paying a real estate agent worth the money? I'm Angelo DiPaola, the Coastal Connection with EXP Realty. Great real estate agents are like the best doctors. They listen deeply, make your goals their own, stay current on trends that impact your decisions, and have experience navigating unexpected situations. We help our clients make the best real estate decisions along the Gulf Coast. Google me, Angelo DiPaola, the Coastal Connection. This is Jay Stubbs with Concourse Financial, and when I'm not working on an insurance plan with a financial advisor, I'm listening to What's Working with Cam Marston. Now back to the show. As I said in the introduction, David Webb has noticed a stench in many businesses across the city of Mobile and elsewhere in Alabama. Here's his feelings about this. Can you smell the buzz in the air? It's everywhere, and it's right under your nose. It's wafting around in bank lobbies, hotels, restaurants, grocery stores, parking lots, drive throughs parks, athletic events, and even school pickup lines. And it's a nuisance. I'm talking about weed. It's public use and foul stench. We're experiencing an ugly green weed wave in Alabama, and it's forcing us non-users to endure disgusting drug use from others that don't give a damn about decency or discretion. They thumb their nose at us and the authorities and are doing so with impunity. And it's all over Mobile, Montgomery, Birmingham, Huntsville, and everywhere else in between. I'm sure you've smelled it more lately. And it seems like we are gradually being conditioned to accept illegal recreational weed used by others as part of normal life. Well, it isn't, at least not yet. A recent opinion poll of Alabamians found that 80% of us strongly support medical cannabis. We mostly agree it has medicinal properties that are helpful to those suffering various ailments. However, that's a far departure from us approving recreational weed consumption. According to Gallup poll this past August, 68% of Americans think marijuana should be legal. I'm obviously in the minority. So is Alabama, with only a 47% approval rate, according to a recent poll out of Montgomery. 38 states allow weed already, with six more in the process of voting for it. And that's a shame, because I do fear the consequences of allowing free recreational use of pot in this state and this country. There are those in Alabama that are prematurely and purposely blurring the lines of us legalizing medicinal cannabis with illegal, unfettered recreational use of pot anywhere and everywhere, and that's a problem. It's a problem for parents having to explain away flagrant pot use by others while playing in a park with the children. It's a problem for our law enforcement. They are increasingly ignoring marijuana offenses because they have more violent crimes to protect us from. Lastly, it's affecting businesses, employees, and customers. In this tight labor market today, what does a business do about employees increasingly using weed? Isn't it a serious liability? A recent NBC study has shown that over 30% of restaurant and hotel workers currently use recreational cannabis in states like Colorado, where it's totally legal. 
Gallup has even indicated that more Americans are smoking weed than tobacco now. How does business deal with the legal and operational nuances of a statistic like that? As a customer, do you really want to trade with a business that employs people that blatantly use marijuana? How does a business deal with employees using medicinal cannabis? That's a whole other can of worms. New marijuana laws will soon become a serious conundrum for this state. If you want to talk about business trends, this matter will definitely be on the horizon and soon. Thanks, David. That's it for us this week. What's Working is produced by Ion Digital and John Thompson. We'll be back in the new year with a new series of programs. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.